Hey there, Mission Control. We're continuing our system overview series, and today I want to talk about heating, heating this entire building, and all the things that we go, go into making that happen. So kind of going back, I actually put together a thermodynamics model where we looked at radiation, convection, conduction, and, and came up with a model for this building and said, here's how much heat it's going to take to be able to heat this building, keep it warm. And we did that with different types of insulation, no insulation, and we're going to have a whole video about insulation in the future. But today, we're just going to focus on heat sources and what we did to actually uh, to implement heating in this building. So I'm standing in the, uh, the anaerobic digester area here. Uh, we have the digester, methane storage, and digestate storage. And right in front of me is actually the radiant heating system for the entire building. Now underneath each of the grow lanes, uh, each of the fish tanks, excuse me, underneath the grow lanes, each one uh, has PEX tubing going underneath of it so that we can actually run warm water underneath of the fish beds. Or in the summer, we can actually move heat away from the fish beds depending on how we want to set this all up. But it all comes right here uh, to this hub and we have all the levers and everything in here uh, to control each of the lanes individually uh, and to make this whole thing work. So. Another thing that we did to deal with heating is we actually put the digester inside of the building. Now this is because the digester needs roughly 70 degrees Fahrenheit. What is that, like 20 degrees Celsius somewhere in there? Uh, 25 Celsius? Uh, so having the stomach, which is this guy back here, inside of the building helps use all the heating that we're doing anyway for the, uh, the plants and actually helps keep the digester warm itself. Now when we did uh, the installation, I also ran um, radiant tubing inside of the digester. So in case it does get cold, it's all part of the radiant heating system of the entire building. Now you might be wondering why is there a big giant vertical post right here? Kind of out of place, isn't Jeff? And the answer is yes. Um, I actually used to have an on-demand hot water heater right here last year and we ended up uh, taking that down and moving it over to the sink area so we can have hot water for our hands. Uh, just this spring I did that. The intent here, uh, why this post is here, is that there will be another on-demand hot water heater. I bought it already, it runs on natural gas. We're going to scrub the gas from the digester and we're actually going to plug it in here uh, and we could actually run the heating system, if we so choose, uh, directly off of the methane from the digester if it gets that cold out or if the digester during the winter does start to get cold because its uh, north and its east facing sides do get exposed to the outside world. Uh, but we have some insulation out there and we'll talk about the insulation in a future video again. But this post here is so that we can put a nice on-demand natural gas hot water heater right here and uh, plug it all in and use that to do the radiant heating throughout the entire building. So the game plan uh, for all of this, uh, and right now we have the propane heater, which is the largest source and most efficient way of heating the building right now, just because it's so big in here, um, is to convert this guy, uh, which it can be done, into a methane-powered heater. So when we get the digester up and running, see how it does. If it does well enough, we can actually plumb this thing into uh, the digester itself, and then our heating can actually be coming from it. Now. The reality is the numbers say that that thing, that's huge. Chances are we're not gonna produce enough methane every day to run that the way that it needs to be run. I won't know for sure until we actually get the digester up and running. So that's a key project this year is to do that. But man, wouldn't it be cool to heat this whole thing just from poo power? That would be pretty neat. So we tried quite a few different ways to heat this building before we ever even got to this point. Uh, if you were to go back and look at some of our earlier videos, let's see, where did we start? Um, I actually did try to use the digester when we first got it going, uh, and I put some put a methane heater um, into the building and it just wasn't big enough. Uh, we tried small propane heaters, uh, that wasn't big enough. Um, in small areas, small areas, we uh, actually put, uh, plastic over the top of lanes two and three, which are the only lanes we had last year, and we put heaters inside of them, and then uh, put in uh, actually a diesel heater, uh, two diesel heaters, little uh, turbine heaters, uh, and they worked really, really well, but they got soot over everything, 
um, pretty inexpensive actually because there's so much more energy for every gallon of diesel than if you were to have um, propane and they burn pretty clean but you still got soot over everything by the end of the year or by the end of the season I should say so we didn't want to do that again um, and then we also put a wood stove there's a double barrel wood stove actually in the bottom of the building in the bowels of the building there's this big double barrel wood stove that we made uh, and it could pump out the BTUs and we had a bunch of wood that we used to heat everything with uh, but it was just simply too small and you were out there twice a day loading it you were tied to the system and it doesn't matter if you use a rocket mass heater or the double barrel wood stove or anything else the rocket mass heater would be more um, more efficient but I actually took the principle of the, the mass heater and actually put the wood stove down into the ground so that we could heat the mass of dirt around it and that would help to keep the building warmer and we had a HVAC system that we put in to move all the air around and um, it kept things above freezing but it was nowhere near good enough and you were just so tied to it you were out there all the time loading it with wood and you, you couldn't go anywhere you couldn't do anything and it the calculations for doing wood is like 24 cords of wood that you would need. So just storing that much wood uh, would, would be problematic. Uh, not to mention cutting it, processing it, and, or you just go buy it, but you're kind of losing the whole point of why you wanted to do wood in the first place. I looked at wood boilers and uh, just decided against it because of that purpose. While they're more efficient, uh, you just you got so much wood that you have to have it. It would be crazy nuts. So we chose to uh, We also looked at geothermal. Excuse me. Oh my goodness. I almost forgot that we looked at geothermal heating and cooling and uh, I would have loved to have done it would have loved to have done it, but it's like forty thousand dollars to put in geothermal heating and uh, The guy I called the well company and, and they won't even do it I'd have to go find a special well company um, just in our area. They they wouldn't touch it uh, so then it becomes even more expensive and uh, it's just like nah, we're not going to do that That's just not an option. So Anyway, uh, that's kind of the, the trials that we've been through so far and we ended up with the propane heater Which is amazing. It's awesome. Uh, it has all the BTU we need per hour You don't really have to trick it out or anything like that. The problem is you just you have to pay to heat the building so uh, Lots of things there that we considered. I'm really happy with where we're at right now uh, but we need to talk about insulation and that's going to be uh, the topic of our next video So I hope you turn tune in for that. I hope you enjoyed this video If you did be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe and don't forget You can follow us on Facebook Twitter and on patreon in the meantime everyone. This is the real Martian